Okay, so welcome back to the Bucket plugin development tutorial series that I'm doing now. This one, um, this is the world generation, train generation series, um, train generation basics, I'll probably call it. Um, this is actually the third time I've recorded this part because my goddamn video thing didn't work. Uh, I, got, I recorded like five seconds, I don't know what happened. Anyway, so apologies if this is a bit sort of, well, probably slightly more polished than usual. <laughs> um, well, not so far. Anyway, so. What we're going to do in this part is very briefly go over the actual process of terrain generation um, and then we're going to get on with sort of carrying on with our code basically to generate our flat landscape with a few trees on it. So when a chunk is generated, well when that happens uh, is either when the world is created or when a player explores into new terrain that doesn't exist yet that the chunk has to be generated. And this is sort of done in two steps. Um, first the chunk generator is called, used. Um, and this is this generate method here, which we're going to be sort of filling out in this part. Um, and what this does is generate like the sort of actual landscape, the terrain. So this is trees, oceans, not trees, this is not trees. This is like hills, um, oceans, mountains, you know, that uh, sort of terrain basically features. And after that, once that's done, um, block populators are called. Um, and these are sort of separate methods which are used to do things like you know, add the sort of more, more fine detail. So for example, they plant the trees, they add flowers, they add long grass, they add pumpkins, they add um, caves, I think, they add ravines, they add rivers, they, uh, maybe they don't add rivers, they add um, you know, all the small sort of dungeons for one as well, that's a good example, they add you know, all the small sort of slightly finer detail. Also ore, they add, they add the ore. So that's the essential basics of the process. Um, so what we need to do now is create the code to actually generate a chunk. So this generate method here that we created at the end of the last part is called whenever a new chunk needs to be created and what it does is it needs to return an array of bytes which represent the blocks in that chunk. And then the server uses that array of bytes to actually you know, create the chunk file on the hard drive and to you know, load it in memory and all that. So what we need to do is create a new array of bytes which we're going to return. So instead of returning null we're going to define a new variable. It's going to be a type of byte. It's also going to be an array. Its name is going to be blocks, and it's going to be equal to a new byte array. Um, and the length of this array has to be three, two, seven, six, eight, just because it just does. And no reason really. That's just you know the number of blocks. Um, yeah. So what we need to do here is sort of fill up that array of blocks um, with the um, you know information and then here we need to return it so we're going to do return blocks like so um, so if we if we ran this now what would happen is we would just generate completely empty terrain you know void nothing zero blocks empty just sky everywhere um, obviously we don't want to do that because that would look very ugly um, so what we need to do is fill up our um, chunk with blocks. So for example, say if, oh okay, I probably should mention this first. Uh, this blocks array, obviously there is no way to encode, well, to have uh, the x, y, and z coordinates separately in a number like this. So what we need to do is sort of encode the x, y, and z coordinate into just a in sort of integer representation. And the way we do that is by taking x, multiplying it by 16, adding z, multiplying by all that by 128, and then adding y. And because that's a little bit awkward, what we're going to do is create a method to handle all that sort of conversion for us. So just above the generate method here, we're going to create a new method. It's going to be private. Um, its, its return type is going to be int. And its name is going to be cowards to int. It's going to take three parameters, which are going to be you know x, y, and z coordinates. These are all going to be integers. So x, y, and z. And then it's just going to return that sort of expression that I just mentioned. Oops. So it's going to return x times 16 plus um, z multiplied by 128 plus y, like so. And then we can use that to set a block. So say we wanted to set the block at 0, 0, 0, so like the corner of the chunk uh, to like bedrock. What we could do is just add it to this blocks array. So do blocks, 
And then here, we need to use that number that looks a bit like this. So this is where we call our coords to int method. And the coordinates are 0, 0, and 0. So this just gives us a slightly nicer way to work with the sort of chunk, because we can essentially now just set a block at coordinates, instead of having to worry about this sort of you know, maths. So what we do is just set that equal to the blocks ID that we want to um, you know, put at that location. So we can get that from the material class. So we do material, and then the material's name. So we could just do bedrock, and then we use get ID, like so. And because this is an array of bytes, it needs to, this needs to be cast to a byte from an integer, which it is currently, or you know, by default. So if we ran this now, what we'd get is one bedrock block, sort of at the bottom left front, I guess, of the chunk. Um, but we don't want that. We want to cover the entire bottom layer with bedrock. So what we need to do is use a loop here. So we need to do, um, well, what we're, what we're going to do first is define three new variables. They're all going to be ints. And these are going to be the x, the y, and the z. And they need spaces. Um, and we're going to use these in our loops. Um, we just define them here because we don't want to keep redefining them. Um, for more complex terrain generation, you will have quite a lot of loops here. So you'll like repeat over and over again. So, what we need to do is loop over every x coordinate, so from every x, so not up to 15. Um, so, we do that by doing for x equals 0, and then while x is less than 15, just increment x. And what we want to do for every x is this. At the moment, all this will, that should be an x there, what this will do is um, just well, nothing, but if we use the x coordinate here, what it would do is create sort of a stripe of bedrock, essentially. So at every x coordinate, yeah, it'd be a, a one, um, one block thick line all the way along the world infinitely, uh, sort of parallel with 15 gaps in between them. So we don't want that, we want to cover the entire thing. So for every x, we also want to do for every y. So here, we need to do another for loop so for, I meant z, not y, for z equals 0, z, y is up and down, z is across. So for z equals 0, while z is less than 16, that should be 16, increment z. And then if we use the z coordinate here, x is x, y is 0, and z is z, what we'll get is bedrock covering the entire y equals zero plane of the world, which is exactly what we want. Before we can test this though, there are a couple of other sort of little things we need to do. Um, each chunk generator has to also provide its own block populators. And I mentioned previously they do things like adding trees, adding ore, sort of finer detail of the sort of terrain generation. Um, and we don't actually have one at the moment. We're going to create one in the moment in a bit in one of the future parts to deal with um, to deal with trees, but at the moment we ha don't have any, but we need to tell the server that we don't have any. So we need to return a list of populators um, from this method that we're going to create. So this method has to be public, its type has to be list, the type of the things inside that list has to be block, uh, block populator, like so, and the method's name is going to be get default populators except you have to use lowercase in the right places uh, I've spelled that wrong as well should be an A there, is that right? Hmm, hopefully so this has to take one parameter which is the world uh, which we don't actually use but you still have to you still have to you know use it uh, and these things just need to be imported um, actually the list has to come first so import list from Java util and block populator. Oh, I've slightly wrong. Um, I've just been completely blind. Uh, yes is the answer to that. So what I'll do is just block populator. Come on, that's right, isn't it? Yeah. Now it needs importing. Okay, good. Right. So this needs to return a list. Um, so what we're going to do is just return. A new, oh, <laughs> new, 
array list and the type of this list is again just block populator. Um, I haven't mentioned this syntax sort of yet, um, but port, port, import array list. Um, but essentially, this is uh, the type that the function actually returns, the method actually returns, and then this is the type within that list. So this list contains these basically, and an array list is very similar to an array. Um, except that it's a bit more flexible, I guess. So, say if you had an array list in the variable list, you could use the method add just to put something into the array, and then the thing goes here. Or you can use remove to remove something from the array. Or you can uh, check to see if something is in the array by using contains. Um, it's just a little bit nicer than sort of the actual array in Java. Uh, but it's, it's basically an array. Um, in fact, it's very similar to an array in like PHP or a sort of lower level language or high level mm, scripting language. There you go. Um, so now I've done that, there's another thing we need to do, uh, which deals with the spawn location. So if you remember, sort of previous uh, to 1.8, so in 1.73 and prior to that, um, whenever you create a new world, you would spawn on sand all the time, and this caused a problem for um, custom terrain that didn't include any sand. So say, well, our train generator here, it just creates a layer of bedrock. Uh, and the problem is that if the, you know, the server generates a world using this generator, um, it will sort of keep generating terrain infinitely, looking for some sand to put the player on. That might not actually be a factor or a problem anymore in 1.8 because you don't seem to dwell on sand anymore, which I missed, to be honest. I like that, but whatever. Um, so the way, to, the way around that was to use a fixed spawn location. Um, I'll I'm going to mention this here anyway because it is quite a useful thing to know how to do, uh, even though it might not necessarily be necessary anymore. So what this does is essentially control the spawn location, so you can set it to a fixed location in the world, you know, like a x, y, and z coordinate. And the reason that is quite a nice thing to be able to do, because say if you were like programming an adventure map or a dungeon or something, you may want to have like a safe house or I don't know whatever something at the spawn location, and you would always want the player to spawn in that. You wouldn't want a random spawn location. So knowing how to fix the spawn location for your generator is quite a useful thing to know how to do. So the way we do that is using the uh, by return by creating a method. Um, it has to be public, and it has to return a location, and its name has to be get fixed spawn location. It has to take a parameter for the world and the random generator. So what you could do is use the random to like offset it by a random amount, I guess, um, which is I think what the actual server does. Um, this needs needs importing, so we can just do that. So, to create a, fi a location at a fixed spawn point, at a fixed point, sorry, uh, a spawn point at a fixed location. There we go. We can just return a new location, and this location is going to be in the world at x equals zero, y equals I don't know. 5 and z equals 0. So that's just you know the, the middle of the world, 5 up. So that should be pretty fine for our sort of testing purposes, um, but you'll probably need to move this up a little bit later. Um, I think actually if you set this to 0, the game won't put you inside a block. I think it'll work out how high you need to be, but you can always try that out if you want. So now we should be ready for a quick test. So if we just export our plugin. Um, don't worry about the warnings for now, um, we, we will be using these variables later on. There's that warning not to worry about. So if we just start the server up, oh, if we just stop the server and start the server and go to our game. Um, I'm using the plugin Multiverse, <laughs> single player, uh, to create the world, although you can also use Bucket's worlds.yml file. I won't be showing you how to do that, I'll just be showing you how to use it. do it with Multiverse because, well, um, that's pretty much what everyone uses. It's very good. I recommend it. So, just join the server. Um, I'll just make it day so I don't get attacked. Uh, new lighting there. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, that's where I was testing the cake thing. So, what we can do is create a new world. And if you just do use the MV create command, it'll tell you basically the syntax for creating a new world. So, the way we create a new world with our custom generator is 
MV create, and then the world's name, which is going to be flat, its environment, which is going to be normal. Uh, if you set the environment to something like nether, you get gas spawning, so that's basically the only difference. Um, obviously, if you don't specify a custom generator, the environment controls the generator, so if you set it to Skylands, you'll get like Skylands world. Um, yeah. Actually, if you set it to Skylands, I guess the time would be set. That's quite useful. Actually, yeah, that is a good idea. If you're creating a free build world, if you could you could set the environment to Skylands, it'll probably make it day all the time. Um, anyway, so what we've done is create a well so far MV create flat normal, and then we need to specify our custom generator, which is sort of the point here. So the name of the generator is just the name of our plugin, which is Flatlands, like so. And if we just hit enter, uh, you can see now why we had that get default generator method added to our uh, initial Java file, you know, um, here, yeah. Um, so without this, when we run this command, how would the server know that our generator is that class file? That's why we have that method. Anyway, hit enter, you get starting world creation and then complete. And if you just look at the console, you'll see that the um, multiverse has logged a message um, that the world's been created and it's using the custom generator flatlands which means that it's basically worked um, so if we go back to our game we should be able to teleport to the world now so we just do mv tp flat um, there isn't a proper spawn point so you just have to do mv confirm to ignore that and then you'll fall a little bit i think that's because we set it to five um, so you, what you can see is now that we basically have done this successfully um, this is bedrock no. Oh. See so that won't destroy it. It's definitely bedrock. There we go. Um ooh, that leave us delayed. Odd. Um plenty of slimes all over. If I just press F three, you can see that we're at two point six, um, which means that this is actually Y equals zero. Uh, the player is a bit higher. Ooh, what was that? I'm scared. <laughs> um these particles are odd. I didn't notice these before when I've gone down in the world, but that's quite I quite like those. They're pretty cool. Like with soot. I don't know. Anyway, so that's basically it for this part. I'm going to quit before the slimes get me. Um, and then in the next part, we're going to deal with adding the, um, you know, the dirt and the grass up to a sort of slightly higher level um, so that it looks a bit nicer. Um, and then we're going to add the trees using a populator. So thank you for watching and join me in part three where we'll sort of continue.